Chimir is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimir. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimir, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. While Megaraptorans represent the only large theropods in the known world, the enormous eastern continent of Kyrule shows a greater diversity of these giant predators. Megaraptorans remain the dominant predators of the continent, notably outnumbering the competition by a substantial margin, but two other theropod clades have their giants relegated to specialized niches, which we will meet in this series. Last week we met the giant cockatrice, called Komukabawe by the Kyrulans. Today is the introduction of the giant abelosaur, the Tekakatik, the crocodile cannibal. During the Tyrant Dynasty, Tyrannosauroids were the top predator. In their shadows, alongside young tyrants, several predators served as their ecological vassals. Entelodonts came during the Oligocene and, while well, omnivorous, still shared the niche with a variety of ceratosaurs, such as noosaurids and abelosaurids, and half-ton eudromaeosaurs, similar in build to Eutoraptor. While the tyrants of Kyrule died, these three clades stepped up to the ecological plate, each claiming a mantle. Entelodonts took the prairie and became the Great Bokodu, and forests were the dominion of the cockatrice. And forests were dominion of the cockatrice. Fossils of abelosaurids have been found in the known world, but it seems the other clade of derived ceratosaurs, the nelosaurs, fared far better in the ecological shadows as vassal predators under the megaraptorans. In modern times, there are several noosaurs in the known world, all specialists of burrowing prey, ranging from small rabbit specialists up to a genus that focuses on hunting sloths and thescelosaurs. The Weochituka of Picardia is part of this genus, and the largest is a sloth specialist of Arvel that can reach two tons in the largest females. In Kyrule, however, abelosaurids fared much better, and noosaurs never got much larger than a few hundred pounds. While some abelosaurids also expanded out onto the prairie, where they gave the Bokodu substantial competition, others took over the wetlands and became highly diverse fairly shortly after the extinction event. Some in this family had short and powerful jaws for specializing in shelled prey like turtles and crocodiles, while well, others got massive on a diet of semi-aquatic mammals and dinosaurs, such as rhinos and leptoceratopsids, which thrive in the wetlands. As the semi-aquatic herbivores got larger, so did the abelosaurids hunting them. The largest was the genus Ziphonodon, which, based on specimens in the Museum of the Great Library, have changed very little in the past 10 million years since they attained what appears to be a conventional theropod maximum of 12 meters and 8 to 12 tons. The Tikakatik, or crocodile cannibal in the Kyrulean language shared with the assembly, is the most abundant modern species. In many wetlands of Kyrule, these are the apex predators. They possess short yet extremely powerful legs, which makes for minimal drag as they jog through shallow water. When hunting in deeper water, they sink thanks to dense bones and minimal air sacs, and run along a substrate with a fluked tail adding thrust in their charge. They are specialist hunters of megafauna, running down rhinos, leptoceratopsids, and large crocodiles common in these habitats. Their jaws are extremely powerful and packed with long, heavily enameled teeth armed not only with primary serrations, but secondary serrations along the edges of these cutting surfaces. While Titanophonius cuts into prey with forward and backward slicing motions, Ziphonodon simply cuts with raw power. Their bite is the second strongest of any living theropod, only losing to Kurajaku bulls due to the latter's tremendous size, 
the proportionally known world noasaurs are more powerful, not surprising considering their method of clamping and holding on. Xiphonodon was able to cut and crush through bone with ease early on, a trait retained in modern times, and their kills often require only a single well-placed bite. The force of this attack is spoken of with great fear and reverence. Unlike the noasaurs of the known world, where females are nearly double the mass of their gracile counterparts, male Xiphonodon are substantially larger sex. Terrestrial abelosaurids, like the land shark of the northern prairie, have larger females, and it's assumed that this condition in Xiphonodon due to females having to nest on shore. Males can still walk out of the water, but they're unable to run due to the greater density than conventional theropods of this size. When hunting on land, they tend to do so from ambush, which is possible thanks to the lack of sauropods, meaning these forests are much denser. They don't need to be proficient in open terrain, as there's plenty of prey in the water and nearby patches of land, but females must go on land to nest. They usually do so within the wetlands, though preferring high enough islands that they can be confident that groundwater won't seep in, rather than go onto territory of fully dry land, which won't be as close to their food source. Finding and defending a territory that not only has good nesting opportunities and ample food can be hard to come by, so while they are smaller than males, females are often much more violent in territorial disputes than the males. The greater size of males help them travel, so even though they aren't as territorial, their territories must intersect with those of several females. So as not to overhunt the females' territory, the best ranges for males occupy those near a source of larger prey, often with a section of land and forest. One of the largest herbivores in the wetland forests of eastern Kyrul is Alcaceratops, the moose drake. These chasmosaurian ceratopsids don't form the large herds of their smaller kin, instead favoring small family groups of related females. Males of this species are solitary. While this makes them somewhat vulnerable to attacks by bull Zephonodon, they are far from an easy kill. Their horns may be evolved to spar with others of their kind, but that doesn't mean they can't skewer a ceratosaur. Duels between these two heavyweights of their respective clades, both between 10 and 12 tons, is often likened to the rivalry between Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops. Megaraptorans of the genus Thanatobates arrived in Kairul 6 million years ago, and though there was not an absolute or swift turnover as it can seem from a geological perspective, it was not long before they became the dominant predator in most habitats. Being very lightly built and reliant on solid ground for sensory purposes, this genus did not invade the wetlands, and Xiphonodon's habitat was largely unchanged, unlike the turnover of the forests and prairies. Xiphonodon enjoyed their reign for another 4 million years, until the arrival of an invader from the west, Kurajaku. These enormous Megaraptorans continue their advancement through the aquatic habitats, with males carving channels between waterways and females drawing them ever deeper inland through the marshes. In modern times, Kurajaku are the dominant predators of this environment, and Xiphonodon must avoid the deeper rivers where the bulls reside. Female and adolescent Kurajaku are much more of a competitive issue than direct predators like the older bulls, and being less specialized in large game means that the Megaraptorans have a much wider source of food to choose from. This can result in a tenuous niche partitioning, with Kurajaku focusing more on large fish, while Xiphonodon hunt rhinos, crocodiles, and drakes, and being in the same weight class means the two do not have a great disparity in combat prowess, but young bulls remember their enemies in this swamp, and are known to explicitly hunt Xiphonodon once they reach adulthood. Even so, the Great Abelisaurid is still well documented in the surveys of Kairul's wetlands, with healthy enough population, 
not considered at risk of extinction. While giant abelosaurids of the prairie and forest were outcompeted by Thanatobates, the clade still has its smaller representatives, especially in the niche of vassal predator. Most common is Salacosaurus. Land or prairie shark is the translation of a vassal predator on these prairies. Their long legs and caudofemoralis muscles, meaning that their tails are wider than they all tall, gives these animals not only astonishing speed but also endurance, though they are notoriously lacking in agility. Because of this, they must go after prey that isn't particularly agile themselves. This specialization is assumed to be part of why the clade was undone, and the great members of this genus went extinct, just as Zephonodon struggles against the more adaptable Kudajaku. When they do catch prey, however, the predatory effectiveness of Salacosaurus becomes readily evident. Their shark-like teeth are also brutally serrated, though they're better suited to slice flush rather than employ a crushing bite. Once a bite is established, they shake like a dog, but ultimately they just have to hold on. The dual serrations means that as prey struggles, the motions make cutting a passive effort for the predator, and a long neck with thick hide means that they can endure retaliation and absorb the shock of the struggle quite effectively. Being a social hunter with several members latching on to cut out chunks of flesh, they are quite good at bringing down large prey much larger than themselves. The ability to take some food while making a kill and very quickly slice into and portion out prey make up for the fact that such a lengthy kill can draw unwanted attention. Thankfully though, by the time Uktan or Bakodu arrive, they've already taken the best parts. They may be disappointing to an Uktan, but for the enormous Intelodonts sharing their habitat, they are happy to feed on gristle and bone once the sharks of the prairie have had their fill. While Megaraptorans are the undisputed kings of all three tropical continents, Abelosaurids and other ceratosaurs hold on as vassals in numerous niches. The mighty Ziphonodon, the crocodile cannibal Tikakatik, holds on proud as the last giant in this lineage of ancient lords. Cheers to Thomas for sponsoring this episode. Shout out to my Patreon patrons, and thank you for watching. Stay fantastic, everyone. Cheers, folks. <laughs>